Hi everyone, so today we're going to be doing more with quadratic equations and solving them by factoring, but we are going to have to write our equations from a word problem. Now remember, I still want you following the problem solving framework that we learned from Robert Kaplinsky. What are we trying to figure out? What guesses do we have? What do we already know about the problem? And what do we need to solve the problem? So here we've got a question. It says the sum of, oh, sorry. Here we got a question. It says the product of two consecutive positive integers is 156. Find the integers. Okay, so I'm going to let x be, I'm going to use that variable I know. So let x be the first integer. Okay. Okay, so what do I know? Okay, what do I already know now? I know that they're two and they're consecutive and that they're positive, so that means I'm not gonna have to worry about a negative number. Okay, so if they're consecutive integers, what do we know? Well, we know if the first integer is x, then we know that the second integer is x plus one. Remember, we use one variable. Okay, so that's what we know. So what else do we know? Well, we know that product means multiply. So we know that we're gonna be doing x times x plus one, and we know that they are going to, the result of that is gonna be 156. So it's going to equal 156. So there I've actually written an equation for myself by going through that framework. Now, could I make some guesses here? Sure. Um, I've got two consecutive numbers that equal 156. So um, I could try 8 and 9. Um, but 8 times 9 gives me 72. So those are too small. I could do um, 12 and 13. Those are consecutive numbers. Let's see. 12 times 13 actually gives me 156. So I know that my numbers are 12 and 13. Well, let's check it with this algebraic equation we just got. Okay, so I have to distribute my x. So I get x squared plus x equals 156. I see that it's a quadratic equation because the highest exponent is 2, which means I have to get it in standard form, set equal to 0. So I'm going to subtract 156 to both sides. So now it's a trinomial or a quadratic set equal to zero. I have to solve by factoring, putting it in factored form. All right, so um, I'm going to be looking for my factors of 156 that add to 1. So I would go through the process. I'd go through 1 and 56, right, um, which we know, are, we know they're going to be really close together. So I'd be going with 156 and two, divided by 2, so 2 and 78. Um, 156 divided by 3 is 52, so 3 and 52, but again, we know that 12 and 13 are our factors of 156, so I might use my guess there. So if I factor that, it's going to give me x plus 13x minus 12 equals 0, because we want them to add to a positive 1. I set each factor equal to 0, and I get x equals negative 13 and x equals 12. Now, this question only asks me for the positive answers, so then I can throw out that negative 13 because it's not an answer, not a solution to this problem. And so my first number would be 12, and my second number would be 13. Now, I just am pointing out that, you know, sometimes it is smart to use algebra to solve a problem. Sometimes it, it, it might be easier to guess and check like we did. So using that framework will help you problem solve, okay? All right, let's look at one more example. This one's a little bit harder. It says define a variable by writing a let statement. The sum of the squares of the sum of the squares of two consecutive positive even integers is 340. Find the integers. Okay, so we've got positive even integers. So I'm going to let x be my first even integer. And if it's the first one, then the next even integer would be 2 away from it, so x plus 2. We know that the sum of their squares, so each of these squared, so x squared plus x plus 2 squared is 340. So that's what we know. We got that all from just the words in the question and the process of us writing let statements that we've been working on. All right, so do we want to have some guesses? All right, so two squares whose numbers equal 340. I don't know. I could try maybe 10 and 12. 
let's see, 10 squared is 100. 12 squared is 144, so that's 244. So those are too small, okay? So I might try 12 and 14. Those are consecutive even integers. So 12 squared is 144. 14 squared is 196. Their sum, let's see what their sum is. 196 plus 144. Wow, look at that, it's 340. So guys, thinking about a guess first can help us. Now we're going to use algebra to prove it. So we know that we've got x squared plus x plus 2 squared equals 340. We know that we do not distribute that because it means we've got two factors of x plus 2. So that means that we have to multiply x plus 2 times x plus 2. I'm going to use actually the area model to do that. Remember we could do that if we wanted to or we could multiply them, or you call it FOIL. So x squared, 2x, 2x, and 4, which gives me x squared plus 4x plus 4. So I've got x squared plus x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 340. All right, so then I've got to simplify. I've got 2x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 340. All right, now it's a quadratic equation, so I have to get it set equal to zero. So I'm going to subtract 340 from both sides, and I'm going to get 2x squared plus 4x minus 336 equals zero. All right, now I notice that they're all even, so we always want to simplify if we can before we try to factor. So I can actually divide every term by 2 because they're all even. That gives me x squared plus 2x minus, let's see, 336 divided by 2 gives me 168. Okay, now I'm going to use my guesses here because I'm guessing that 12 and 14 that I came up with give me 168 when I multiply them. And they do, and they are two away from each other. So to factor this, I'm going to have x plus 14 and x minus 12 because they multiply to 168 and add to 2. All right, now I set each factor using the zero product property to zero. So x equals 12 and x equals negative 14. We wanted a positive answer, so there I just proved that my first integer is 12 and my second integer is 14, okay? All right, guys, hopefully that was helpful. If you need to rewatch, Go ahead and do that. And tomorrow we're going to talk about why we can't just guess and check all the time if we have problems like these, okay? All right, have a great day.